Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to another Magnolia webinar. Uh, today we're broadcasting from the brand new Magnolia offices in Basel. Um, I think this is only our second webinar that we've broadcast from this location. Today we're very excited to bring you a webinar on building modern and responsive sites quickly using Magnolia. I will be your host today. I'm Zach Grant, and I advance the slides one too fast. Just back up one step. So I'm Magnolia's technical evangelist. Today I have the easy job. I need, merely need to introduce uh, Tomasz Grigowski, who is presenting today. You may not know Tomasz, though you probably know his work if you're a Magnolia user. Um, each day when you visit the Magnolia site, you're probably looking at work that he's done. He's a front-end web developer. He's got 15 years of experience. He's been with Magnolia for about three years now, and he focuses not only on our corporate website, but on other Magnolia web properties, uh, things like the App Finder and so on. Most Magnolia webinars are for Java developers, but this one isn't. If you're a Java developer, you'll still get a lot out of it, but this is intended primarily for front-end web developers, people who have uh, solid HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills. You don't need to know Java IDEs. You can simply work in your favorite editor, um, your favorite shell, and uh, the, with the file system. So it makes it pretty easy to get started and dive in. You should know a bit about Magnolia. You should have uh, at least edited some pages, have an idea of how the app concept works, and so on. If you don't know these concepts, it'll be a little bit hard to follow along right now, though it'll be easy enough to follow along if you watch the video after looking at some of the docs. In the webinar, you should expect that you'll learn how to create a content app from scratch, that you'll learn how to import data into the content app using Magnolia's REST API, that you'll learn to fetch content from the app using AngularJS and, of course, REST, that you'll be able to style the content from the app using Bootstrap, and that you'll be able to put all of these things together to build a fully responsive site using Magnolia that can be easily edited using the content app. Once you master these skills, you should expect that you can produce a decent responsive website based on Magnolia, at least a nice working prototype, in about a day. If you've got questions, as some of you already do, use, you go, use your GoToWebinar control panel, and just bring this up here, to type in your questions. If they're immediately relevant, um, I'll do my best to answer them right away, or to pass them to Tomas to answer. If they're more in-depth, then I will try to handle them, or we'll handle them, after the webinar. And I think the last piece, before we get into Tomasz's live demo, is just a bit of background. Tomasz is using the latest release of Magnolia, 5.4.2, and he's using a few additional modules. He's using the REST Tools Bundle, which gives you a handy toolkit to test REST queries and so on directly inside of Magnolia and, and visualize the results. He's using the Neat Tweaks Bundle, which gives you some enhancements to configuring Magnolia, He's using the Bootstrap framework. He's also using Angular, but he just gets to treat that as a resource in the Resources app. So it's not even really a requirement. It's very, very easy to add. All of these modules, REST, the REST Tools Bundle, Neat Tweaks, uh, the Bootstrap framework uh, module, they're all available on our Nexus server. Just visit nexus.magnoliacms.com and search, and you can find them. And with that, I am going to pass the screen over to Tomasz. Okay, sorry for the delay. Uh, thank you, Zach, for a uh, very nice interaction. And hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm really going to do the live demo, so <laughs> I'm expecting some typos and possible errors, so please excuse them if, if they are coming. But other than that, let's start. Uh, as Zach mentioned, I am using almost first installation of uh, Magnolia 5.4.2 Enterprise Edition running locally, so no Eclipse, no any else IDE. 
and I just install three additional bundles or modules. Uh, when I will uh, get to work with these modules, I will always mention it so you don't have to be scary if you will see something that's not out of the box in the Magnolia. And I added a little bit pre-configured this, this instance. Uh, and again, I will uh, every time mention what I already pre-configured and why. Uh, one of the things is in the Magnolia properties files, I set up the, the path to my resources there because I would like during this webinar to also present the light development approach and working with your file system and so on, uh, which also requires to enable uh, Magnolia developed to that's just for information to now. Uh, well, uh, the goal of this uh, demo is to create a website which will uh, render like interesting places uh, in the Basel or around the Basel. And uh, we will store these places in the content app. And that's the thing I'm going to start with, to create a content app. Uh, Many of uh, you probably don't know that you are able to do it really quickly since Magnolia 5.3, one of the really, uh, earliest versions. Just going to, to Dev, Groovy, and there is hidden one, a really useful uh, script called uh, Create App Script, where you just have to define a few things, uh, like your app name, uh, I want to have the app which called place, uh, where this app going to be in which module, because I am i don't create my own module for this demo, I'm just using the modules which exist in Magnolia, I will just place this into Groovy module, uh, where I want to have this app displays, uh, it's mean which app group, in this case the, the edit group is this one which is perfect for me, and I may also choose the icon for this app. Uh, if you go to our documentation site, search for icons, you will probably land on this page. Uh, where is the nice map of all icons? You can simply reuse on many places in Magnolia. And I would like to use this icon for my app. So i um, just will do this. And everything else is fine. So I'll just run this script. It takes a while. To do something, it, it is successful uh, now because it's affect up launcher. I have to look out and log in, and you see I have my places up here. Just complete new one, just quickly like this. Of course, it's completely empty, and my, I may go to other place. Uh, by default, there are just two these fields. I may just type some test here. I may choose a photo. But let's do it quickly this way. But I would like to have in my uh, website like 30 or more places, maybe more in the future, and I don't want to really type each of them manually. So I can use the REST API and I can import data into this content app. And since this is almost the most tricky thing of all these webinars, I'm going to show it now in the first place because, of course, I need to import the data. Uh, so first, let's uh, show how the REST API looks like for AVI REST2. If you install the REST2 bundle, uh, you will have this app uh, here in the dev uh, group, uh, which is a nice swagger tool. Uh, I also had to pre-configure to the right path to this one, to this place, uh, to have it work it, so just uh, to be sure. And then if I want to get uh, a note, let me just get here, and I want to have notes and get them, which gives me a tool like this, where I may just uh, place my app that I want to list everything in one depth, and click to try out. And if everything is set up correctly, I am getting response code 200, which by this legend is OK. And by the way, here I have to also mention that I did one per setup before this webinar about the security. To have this working correctly, okay, I maybe we go switch back to to this app. It's important to have uh, this URL set up in the security. Uh, I will show you, and you have to do it for two roles. 
Uh, one role is the rest role to have it working inside the admin central, as you see here, and to have the same in the anonymous role for working on the public side of the website or in the uh, when editing or previewing the site. And, and the things why I did it before is if you add any anything into anonymous role, you have to restart your instance. So to save this time, I already did it before. And when you when, when you will receive the error or response code like uh, 400 or something like that, you probably did this wrong, or just need to restart the instance. Okay, uh, using this API, I can also access it using this this path. And here is a also preview of the body body response, and uh, there are some like a root uh, system nodes. But the one last you can see it's my test I already created in the places, which is the empty. So as you can see, I may I may use this REST API without writing any Java, without providing any endpoints. But the format of this default REST uh, course is really strict. That if uh, I will show you later, I will get to this later. But the thing is that you have uh, always just a node and all properties as an object, which is called properties. And you have to really work with this strict uh, format, which can be a bit tricky, but I will get to all of these later. So now I do have a, a working REST API set up correctly. Uh, so what I have to do, uh, I have a import script. Again, because it is a tricky thing, I prepared this script. It's not really a small one script, but it's for one use, or I can set up for like a automatic import in the time I want and so on. It's just a JavaScript. Simply what it does, it uh, write it to work with the Foursquare API, which I'm going to use. If you go to developer.foursquare.com, uh, look for documentation, explorer, you will probably land on this page. And what you can do, if you will type here the get me all venues near Basel, uh, you may receive the, the link with the response, which will display some favorite place about the Basel. And the thing I am going to do is to use this, this uh, link, this response, and import into Magnolia. And the thing is, this, uh, uh, this JSON has a different format with a strict format as I was talking about. And because of that, I prepared a script which will just simply transform it and put into. You don't have to really care what is right here now. It's just that import thing, and I want to just show that it is possible to have it or to do so. Uh, just one extra note is here the put, uh, it's always able to put just a one node. So you have to have it in the, in some, each or loop and do it for every single entry, just to be sure what is going on. And uh, one more uh, thing about the REST API, you always have to run in inside the Magnolia. You may not have the script in your, just in your browser, uh, which is somewhere in the locally, just run it and hope it will import. It has to be as a page in the Magnolia. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a page using this as a template, be able to run this script. And it's uh, really simply, I may do a configuration directly here using the YAML file. So I can have imported YAML. And in this file, uh, the minimum configuration you have to do in the YAML for, the, for all templates is to have your title. Uh, and the type, which in this case is going to be marker and uh, template script, uh, which is going to be this one. Unfortunately, it has to be uh, the full path, which is from the resources folder. So it means in the resources folder, it has to be webinar template pages and uh, import HTML. If I will save this, and if I had uh, set up my Magnolia properties file, I can preview is this configuration is in the Magnolia going to resources app. Here is my webinar folder, templates, pages, and here you may see there is that I may have a typo there, but that shouldn't be an issue at this level. 
But you see the, the inside is exactly what I write in my favorite Coda editor. Uh, because this is the page configuration or page template right in the YAML, it's uh, available everywhere. But it's a good place now to create my home page for all my website and then put this as a sub page uh, into this my home page. And now I will a little bit step uh, away and go back into it in a few minutes because it's time to show you basic about the Bootstrap framework, uh, which is one of the modules I installed and which gives me uh, default Bootstrap styles, uh, responsivity, all the things I can modify, uh, nice working with the layout, uh, some basic components and so on. I can show you in this uh, Bootstrap framework demo just uh, quickly if you go there. And if you want to use it, I recommend to go through because all these five sub pages are made as a how to use it. So you may read all the things or not the all, but many of the things you may do with this module are described here, how to work with the page layout. It's already made in it. So if you go there, you see this page defense, everything. And the last thing is if you want to start your project based on this uh, Bootstrap framework module, what you have to do, and it's simply just go to multi-site and extend this Bootstrap framework. And that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to do it in the NetNetWeek configuration. It's a configuration app, which is a little bit improved from the standard, uh, standard configuration app. And I will use this feature many times during this, this demo. As you can see, here is a little bit more things. One of them are the bookmarks here on the bottom. Whatever you want, you may do, add a, a bookmark and then just quickly go there. Uh, by default, there is a bookmark to multi-site. And that's exactly the place where I want to go now. And as I said, I want to extend this Bootstrap framework. So I may use uh, this thing. Um, And now you're probably saying, oh, what is doing? Because this is uh, the dialogue you probably don't know. Again, it is a dialogue uh, from Netweeks, which allows me just by one dialogue to create node, create property, and assign value to the property. So if I save it, I have it exactly here. And because I'm extending something so what, what exists, it creates this link. Now it's easy because it's this one. But if I will follow that link, I may get into that configuration. And I also need to set up because I need to set up the new handle prefix. And I will do it just this way. My page is going to be webinar. Yeah. webinar. And that's probably all now. I have set up my, uh, or I should have set up my uh, multi-site definition. So if I will go to page, create new page, which is going to be webinar. Just save it as a already BF means bootstrap framework home page and open it to having this uh, the black navigation and white body. I'm immediately recognizing that it's applying the bootstrap styles, the default ones. So that means I already set up everything correct. So I have my home page and now in this home page, I want to add a page. And as you can see, I already have here that import page I did created five minutes before. And I'm going to work with it. So it's going to be import page. The, the thing is, uh, if you create your page definition using the YAML, you have it uh, available everywhere. So you don't have to care about availability now. So I have this page. If I open this page, it's uh, now it's asking me for that four square uh, JSON. So let's go here. I will take this. This is like a really custom part, but it just has to demonstrate what is possible to do with the Magnolia. This is the preview of the, of the strings, which is friendly with the Magnolia REST API. And it also tells me, says me that the 30 places was imported. And if I go to my places up, here we go. I have imported like a 30 places. Of course, if I will go to edit any single of them, like a cargo bar, which is our favorite bar from the old <laughs> Magnolia office location, unfortunately, I have only place name and still the, the photo. But if I export the data, 
there is much more thing inside. There is like a contact phone, there is a location address and much more thing. So let's go to just quickly edit the dialog to be able to edit this uh, this fields as well. So it's in the net configuration again. Uh, modules, I created this app in the Groovy module, if you remember. Uh, there is a places app. There is a detail editor form. Uh, even this is app. This part is the exactly same uh, as if you're uh, working with the dialog for your component uh, or whatever. You may see there is a form. There are the tabs, the tab place, and this tab place is the fields. Which one is the name? One is the file upload, which we have now. Okay, I'm not going to use that file thing now. And I may add uh, as many fields as I want. Again, let's go to Netweeks, which allows me to add a field just using the dialog. I will just put the field name, field label, and choose that this is a text field definition. And let's just do the same for a few more things like a location address. Okay, the city. Uh, anything more interesting here? Yeah, the title, of course. Uh, the difference between name here, that's the really name, which is like uh, skipping uh, spaces with replacing with the dashes and some special characters. But I want to be able to edit both of them. So the title is the like the nice one I want to have. Text field definition and maybe the last one, the, the URL. So the field. Okay. Uh, let's go back to places. I have to reopen them to see these changes. I do so. Okay, I don't want to have this my test anymore. But for the, the cargo bar, I already showed. Now in the dialog, I have all the fields. I set really quickly, and I may edit them or whatever. Or there is much more fields. But for the demo now, it's definitely enough to have these. And so we have uh, we have content up almost full. We have all data there. So now let's to see how to render them on the page. Let's start with something simple, like to create a detail page. Uh, I am going to have a one detail page for all entries. I don't want to have like a one page for every single entry, but one page which will render, at some case, all these entries. So I'm going to add a page, call it detail, uh, choosing the, the standard page, and I'm going to this page. Uh, that's basically what you get with one predefined row, with one predefined column. The, my goal is to have this detail page in the layout that I will have like an area displaying the data from the content app, like the name, phone, and so on. Then uh, area with a picture, maybe of the location, or maybe some advertised banner, something like that. And uh, add the area behind just with the text, like you know about this website or something like that. Let's say these two areas will be same for every single detail page, and just this area will be changed. So let's just do it, editing one more row. Just have to save it. And for this row, I want to use the different layout. And that's boot, uh, Bootstrap Framework module allow me immediately. I may choose the layout. These are predefined. You may add as many else you want. The thing is that the first number is saying how many columns this uh, row will have. And uh, in the brackets, there is a number uh, which means the width of the columns. So, like for example, in this case, there will be two columns. Uh, one will have a regular size, and the second one will be like a double width. So, uh, let's use. I would like to have this for in my case. And okay, I have it immediately. I can anytime can go back and change this layout to to whatever I want. Now, just put there a placeholder image. 
it's really quickly. You just choose the component. You don't have to even choose that image, and it will play, uh, put the placeholder. And you can anytime go back and replace this placeholder with the image you really want. And here in this, I want to have that text. So let's go use the text and image component. I will take some text from here about this page, and there will be some placeholder text as usual. Uh, because this is a text and image component, uh, and you don't want to have image here, you have to say in the layout no image. Otherwise, this component will also have like one placeholder waiting for the replacing by the official image later. So this is my layout, and now I need to display the data here. Uh, for this, I need a new component. Uh, let's go to create a new component. Here I'm going to create a new file. One is going to be detail.ftl. Just to be do it in small steps. So let's slender like it works first. And do the again the YAML for the setup this component. Uh, usually I do prefer still use the con JCR configuration. But for this demo, I think it's nice to present how easily it can be just using the YAML files. So, YAML. Okay, let's help a little bit. Just, oh no, this here. And it's place detail. Free marker is fine. And here I need to put. Uh, this and this file, of course, it needs a little bit of modification, but it's just, you know, to avoiding typo, I always prefer to drag and drop. Uh, so I have my configuration, but in this case, I need other availability for this component to have it available here in this, this group. Uh, also one uh, handy thing in, in uh, NeatWeeks, if you have selected any components and you are as a super user, you have here option to go to the template definition, which immediately brings me to configuration to exact this component, which was exactly I was in. And here there is the area with the components in, and I may add uh, the new one. Uh, again, to our typo, I will just quickly check if the YAML is in the in the webinar and copy his. It's here and copy this part. So I don't need. I would like to have a detail with ID, and I need to modify this a little bit to looks like webinar and no YAML at all, and the save, and that's it. If I will close it and reload this page to see the changes, go to this one. I have available this my please detail component. So just add it and it works. But that's not what I want to have here. Of course, I want to render the data from the content up. The next, uh, like a simple step, is to hard code one exact place and display the data from, for example, again, this cargo bar. I don't have to do advertisement for this, but it's always in my eyes. Uh, OK, to do so, let's just assign place uh, CMSFN uh, content by part. The part is the cargo bar, and from the workspace, places. Uh, place dot name. If I'm doing like a step by step, I always prefer to render this at name at the first time because every uh, every node has this. At name, it's really note name in the JCR. So if you miss or do a typo like in the title or something else, the name always exists. So just go back to that uh, page, and here I have the the cargo bar. Okay, now let's see if it's even title is there. Place that 
title and do this way. If title does not exist, then display the name. Just quickly check. So yeah, that's the right without dashes. And the same way I would like to have, uh, sorry, um, few more data here like place dot, okay, I'll get back to it later. I will just prepare like a four things. And now let's look what was in the export. How was the name of the contact phone, this one. Then the location address. Okay, the city, even well, all of these places are from the Basel. That's another now, and uh, maybe the DA, well, it's, it's nice to have there. In case something is not exist, just do it this way. Okay, and let's go to preview. Oh, okay, not parser. <laughs> nice. I said at the beginning there is always typo during the live webinars, demos, and so on. Okay, here I have all data. As I said, it's uh, hard coded now because I exactly say give me the, the cargo bar. How to make this page uh, flexible? It's, uh, there is uh, more options. Uh, the next thing uh, to show you the working with the URL, I'm going to preview this page exactly as on the public. It's easy trick to do it if you, if you take that URL and remove this dot magnolia up central thing and just simply have there your path in the website, which is like this, you will get the page exactly as is it on the public instance. Just a small trick. So I have this cargo bar. Now, how to make this page flexible? You may use the properties in the in the URL, or what I do like more is to use the selector. Selector is something like something like this. When I enter or load the page, I still have the same page, but I'm giving a selector or a property to this page. And why I do prefer to use the selectors more, uh, many search engines think this is the different page from the Chaza detail. Or if this change, it looks like for them like a different page. But in the Magnolia and your system, it's the, still the same page. And if we will go to edit FTL and write uh, state dot get selector. Uh, Yep. But something is here. Uh, what does it mean if I will replace that something with uh, something real, real like, well, for example, this one? I will get this string here. So it's really easy to do something like um, cargo bar. And but well, yeah, like this, uh, like this, yeah, and not the selectors. Where I'm saying uh, everything what is in the selector, put into content path behind the slash, and just in case that the selectors do not exist, put there a cargo bar just to have some like a placeholder or something to display. If I will save this, go to page. I have now the Zoom Kus Cafe culture bar in the URL and the load the page. You may see that all these data now are loaded uh, from the content that relevant to Tsunku's Cafe. So just because what I placed here, I get the, the data. So now this page is, is flexible by the content. And that's just a small step to do to generate a list of all things and give them the links where this selector part will be different. So let's do let's do a list component. Uh, I already again prepare. Well, other way, there is a many things how to how to list uh, whatever from the Magnolia. The probably the simplest one is to use the similar method as here in the detail, where you will get you may get like a root, then use CMS function uh, childrens to list all childrens, and then just create the links. That's probably the easy one. But I would like to demonstrate to you how to use AngularJS to create this list with the REST API. 
And the reason why I like to use AngularJS for the biggest list is that when you want like a search with this list or filter with this list, it's much more easy to do with the Angular uh, than write everything here in the free market. Uh -huh. So let's let's do it. Uh, First, uh, okay, I have already prepared my list FTL because it's Angular and it's probably a lot of typos to write it now in the live way. For now, ignore this bottom part and focus on the tip one. Um, I have a component which is uh, where is a script loading just the Angular resources from this folder. Uh, there, there is a JavaScript which just defined the app for the Angular, uh, set up the controller and in the controller there is the most important thing there is again the rest call to get all the places as I showed at the beginning in the in the rest tool up on success it will assign to scope places the response nodes and then I have a HTML assigned it to this model which do uh, Angular repeat place in places and just display the names so at the end it should gives me the list of the all the names to get this into Magnolia, again, I have to write a uh, new YAML file, uh, list.yaml. OK, let's copy. And just list. I hope this way I'm not going to do a typo. Uh, and again, this has to be available uh, anywhere. Uh, I would like to have this list on the home page. So let's go open that my home page, which is this one. And again, this component, let's go to define new availability. Now I'm just duplicating this one. Go back to page, I don't want to see the changes. And here is my list of places component. Put it into page and immediately you see I have the list. Uh, now again, uh, I would prefer to show the next thing to work in this like a preview mode. Here is the list, it's just a basic list. And But something is wrong. As you may see, these first items are something, well, not correct. Uh, the thing I do like working with the Angular JS and all these front end things is that if you have your console, you see uh, the finished loading of the Angular JS, which you can get in. You may open, you may preview, and here you may see the all nodes getting from via this REST API. And the interesting thing now is that all my uh, places has type place, but this first two doesn't. So just on the Angular level, uh, you may really easily, and I will just copy paste this. Uh, you may really easily just say Angular if place type is place, then do the repeat, otherwise keep. So I just save it, and if I will just reload, I have just a Right, right things. Uh, but again, these are the names, uh, the JCR names, not the titles, and I want to have the titles here. And again, here is a, the, that small issue working with the REST API uh, and that strict format. And now I can nicely show you the, the thing, the basic object, a JSON object, has just the identified that JCR name, path, type, but everything else is in the other object properties. And the thing like the title, it's it's object which is a name title and then it has a values and this is the property of that or the, the value of, of that title. So you have a little bit to to work with this and I will use this part which is JavaScript going through each node in that node look into each property and if the property has a name, the title, then it will assign like a new uh, a new value into into node, and assign it the, the value of that title. And if I will do this and change this name to title, 
I should get the right names. That's the one thing. But uh, as I said, the JCR name is definitely better for the links. In case I want to have a link, I will just show you this code. Uh, what I did, I have a link still with the place title as a label, but the link itself is going to its its link to site root, and then it's uh, into the replacing the detail the the selector, which in this case will be always the the JCR name and placing the HTML. So now I have a links, and if you may, when I hover, if you are looking at the bottom left corner, you may see that selectors are changing. That means I may go to detail of the foundation, I may go to detail of San Diego Park, or to whatever I want. Just this easy way. Okay, but this this is still doable with uh, just with a free marker and a basic function, but. Let's show a little bit more of Angular. I will replace all this part. And the thing I does is uh, I add a new input with the Angular model search. And then uh, in the in Angular repeat, I am saying to use the filter search. I'm also applying some bootstrap styles uh, for the columns layout, for the thumbnail. I also put the image, in this case, just as a placeholder image, because I don't have yet the, the images for every single place, and the link is the same. So having this and reloading the page, I am getting the list of, or the view of this. Again, all of them are still working the same way, and that's the thing with Angular. If you go for the search and start to search for something, it's, it's live. You don't have to reload the page to search for something. Um, and you may see just when you type something, it's it's change. So that's nice. And it's the same way you may put the, the selector options, selects for the categories or some for some properties and so on. And it works live. So that's that's cool. And that's the way about to use Angular. Or why do do I prefer using the Angular? Well, so far up to now, uh, you may see that I never spoke about responsibility and all these things because Bootstrap Framework is handling this. And if I will do reload, you see the page is responsive up to this really minimal way. So I really have not to care about it if I'm using the Bootstrap Framework at the beginning. Even the small view, it's changing the search. So this, that's, this everything is cool. Of course, the detail page as well, this way. So, but you probably don't want this default uh, default black and white styles. So let's just quickly look how you can restart your page. The the easiest thing or the these default styles are in uh, in the resources because it's provided by Bootstrap Framework module in CSS. And here, for example, this Bootstrap in CSS, it's about all these styles. Uh, if you go, the, the easy, easy way to demonstrate, if you go to get bootstrap page and navigate to customize sub page, they have uh, the online compiler for, uh, for your styles. So you may go here, you may change your brand uh, primary color, you may change your background, you may even play with the width of the pages and so on. And I already did, I changed, I think, seven or eight fields here. I'm going to click on the compile and the download. It will take a few seconds and gives me the, this folder, the zip with this folder, where is the CSS. And one now interesting for me is this minimal version of the bootstrap. I'm going to open it. I'm going to copy it to Magnolia because I mentioned it, it, this file and just hotfix that file. And save. Just going there, loading. And it looks different. It's still responsive. It's just applying different different style. So that's that's the easy way, like one one way to go. I would maybe prefer something not uh, replacing life. So what I may do, I just I move that styles reload to see that it's again the black and white. And one thing which config by far this all this working with the resources allow you is that you may also rewrite in your resource folders anything else, not only your uh, thingy. 
So if I want to rewrite this file on the file level, let's do it just this way. In my resources, new folder, it's that bootstrap framework, uh, new folder, CSS, and I will now put this bootstrap minimal file into this folder. It's there. I will close it because it's make my editor laggy, this big file. Okay, and now just going here, reloading, and I have this task back again now from the file system. And yeah, but that means if you want to edit something, you have to go manually edit these files. But we are using Bootstrap framework, so why not do you really use the grant and the less to, to compile your file? And that's easy. On the this level, where here is my Magnolia, uh, here is my resources, here, are, uh, here I do have the Bootstrap file, uh, Bootstrap uh, distribution, which you can download. Uh, if you go to grant file, this is the file which is saying what has to be compiled where. And by default, if I will just navigate to like a CSS, it's uh, placing everything into this folder, which is this one. And I would like to change this. I would like to replace in this grant file all this, everything what is going to be placed in the distribution folder. I would like to place this into my resources. Okay, that. Oh, no. Bootstrap. Oh, yes. So, I replace all. Yeah, I see here, I save it. And that means uh, I set up everything to, to be uh, compiled just here into Bootstrap Framework. That means uh, if I will go to command line and run gruntdist, which recompiles everything. And I may tell you that I spent like a one hour before this webinar to changing the less files. You know, the less files, it's our pieces of the file CSS when you can go and define exactly the same how in their online uh, online tools. So let's say body background and all these things. So I spent already some time here, changed a few of these things, add some image like for the replacing the placeholder and so on. And just by running these commands, which is, is done now, I recompile everything here in the bootstrap, including this bootstrap means. It means now immediately when I will reload this page, I have something completely else. I still have all that content, but I restyle it like in one hour. And all these things are still responsive. You may go to detail, which is also responsive. And that some CSS animation really easily to do in the CSS, and even the search is still working and running the animations. So that's how to create modern responsive websites fast. Thank you for your attention. Zach, do we have any questions? And Tomas, we have a bunch of questions, uh, which is good. So, all right, I'm going to look at the last three questions. OK. So the um, majority of questions are really about using uh, JCR configuration and YAML together. Um, why? I, I guess let's start, I think, at the beginning. And let's start by saying, why aren't we using YAML for everything right now? Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a good question, but not, not for me. <laughs> Sometimes I do have the same questions. Uh, yeah, currently in version 5.4.2, you unfortunately can't use YAML for everything, like for multi-site configuration or something like that. You may use it for the components, for your templates, for app, but I'm not so sadomasochistic to write an app in, <laughs> in YAML file because this is really like a thousand of lines. And uh, even that import functionality is not working still very well, uh, 
So, but that, that's definitely going to change. Uh, I may say a few rumors, like in the version 5.4.3, you will be able to set the uh, multi-site things and, and so on. So it is definitely going to change. But for now, uh, yeah, you are limited with using the YAML. Uh, but in this demo, I showed YAML um, because of all these new approach you can do. But as I said before, I always prefer do org configuration as JSUR. For me, it's much more handle. If you see that neat tweaks, it's speed up the JSUR configuration, gives you a link and all these things. So in a regular project I'm working on, I'm not using YAMLs at all, and I'm still staying with the JCR. But I'm using that, that uh, file system to keep uh, FTLs, to keep resources, even override resources of the other modules. This is pretty cool, and you don't have to go to Magnolia. You may work just between your uh, uh, favorite editor and then the, like a public preview of the instance. And you don't have to go to configuration if you don't want like an edit dialog or reconfigure something. And that's something that is really cool on new files for Magnolia. Okay. You know, one other thing to mention with this. Um, I'd like to remind our audience that Magnolia Templating Essentials, which is what provides the YAML configuration, is still a 0.5 release. So once it gets to 1.0, we should see a full set of the, the same features that we see in JCR. Of course, there are any number of other questions around using YAML and JCR together. The general observation from a few people is that it's confusing to know um, which is which and which to use. In particular, how do you know or how do you deal with having your configuration in two places? Okay, yeah, that's a good point. One more thing to mention also. And sorry, folks, Tomas is breaking up. There we go. One moment. OK, hope you hear me now better. Uh, yeah, the thing is, uh, and I, why I'm not using the YAML for the whole project. I may do almost all these uh, templates, uh, components of the page definitions in the YAML, but that means because in the YAML you may not extend, uh, I will have to write all these things from the beginning or well, just take them somewhere, which means the, the home page setup, the standard page setup, that five components you was able to see uh, in the Bootstrap framework. And that's like two days, three days of work. But this Bootstrap framework is nice, uh, like a foundation for every my project I'm using, uh, which gives me this already. And the only thing what I have to do is add their availability. And unfortunately, I can't do this with a YAML, just a piece of availability to something what's existing in the JCR. So in this case, to speed up things to, to the higher speed, I have to work with the boat. But if you're starting your project, you may go only with the YAML. You may set up your availability in your page definitions in the YAML, and you may be fine just with the YAML. Uh, probably I am so uh, so known of the Magnolia because I three years working here and just know the JCR enough that I just like to work with the JCR. That's the thing why I'm doing both. And in the regular project, I will don't do the YAML configuration, so I will work just with the one. But that's my personal opinion. Now, luckily, we have this both way, and you may choose which one you like more. Oh, low tech solutions. The low tech solution we are currently using is we are handing my headset back and forth at the moment. Let's keep going through the questions. And also on the issue of how to mix and match JCR and YAML, um, I'm going to ask one of our devs to write a quick blog post about it. For myself, if I'm, um, I prefer to use YAML because it's easier. I'm not a Magnolia expert developer. Um, and um, if I need to override something, I tend to do it in the resources app. 
if I need to extend something, well, then I tend to go and get help. Um, but I'll ask for a blog post to cover up some of these details. I also imagine that is one of the sharp edges that should be smoothed out as, um, as we reach the 1.0 for MTE. All right, I'm continuing. Okay, reading the questions that are coming in, because they're coming in quickly. Okay, um, I'll answer an easy one. Any plans to upgrade the Swagger support and the REST module to Swagger 2? No idea, but uh, I'll find out in a moment. <clears throat> And Marvin asks, when will we spend money for good headsets for the next webinar? I don't think this is actually a headset issue. Uh, something seemed to happen. <laughs> Tomash assures us that he has a, an expensive headset. I think that something went wrong with his USB um, um, a hub or driver. Okay, going through, and we already have an answer for one of the questions. Um, Jan Haderka, um, our, our head of development, uh, says the new Swagger should be in as the next major version of the REST module. And Jan, when will that next major version be, roughly? All right, just looking at the time here and keeping going through the earlier questions. There's a specialized question about Ajax, but I'm going to punt on that for now. I have a comment from someone saying that they're working with many teams on a self-service application based on Magnolia, allowing business users to compose pages made of multiple NG applications. I want the developers to work on the NG part out of Magnolia, as I have a team responsible for Magnolia CMS. Any advice on how to do this? I'm afraid not today, but I will write down the question and see if we've got anything locally. <laughs> uh, someone has asked for a 30-second recap of all the passages in this webinar. I don't... So the uh, the webinar is recorded, um, so you can you can follow along and and see uh, what was covered. Um, and Tamash will also be writing a blog post about it, so you'll have a nice summary. All right, another question: How do you manage files from your local computer to the final production environment? Okay, uh, that's pretty easily. Uh, we just uh, commit to Git, and then we have scripts on our instance, uh, which uh, may check for the changes on the Git and update automatically that resource folder. Or uh, I have a command for do it uh, manually, so I just run one command, and on the all instance it will do just Git pull, and then the resources are replaced. All right, Jan says that the new Swagger um, uh, should be in around Christmas or New Year. Uh, Marvin asks, where can we contribute to new blog entries or um, uh, work on webinars? And that's pretty easy, Marvin. Just drop um, anyone on the marketing team a note. Um, so uh, with all of Magnolia, it's pretty much first name, period, last name. So since I'm the one here right now, I'll just put in my address. We're always happy for ideas. We're happy to work with people on webinars and so on. Uh, and with the new blogging platform, we're happy to have guest posts. OK, 
Okay, uh, next question. Uh, when will uh, the point eight release of the travel demo be out publicly, possibly with text and image configured? I think I think we'll just wait for Jan to answer this in the background. Yeah, as as Tomas points out, we're not neither of us are on the product team, so some of these we'll have to wait for Jan to answer. Um, the question is, will demo content, the Bootstrap demo, be available like the Hello Magnolia demo? It actually is. If you download that module, then the content is included. All the demo content is already in there, so you can start working with it right away. There's one for 5.4. There's also one for 5.3. And I can see that Jan has a more sophisticated answer for how to mix YAML and JCR. Um, he says for templates and for dialog definitions, use the YAML. For virtual URI mappings, site definitions, template availability, for that you need to stick with JCR for now. Okay. Next question. One of the commonly used modules is the form module. Will you prepare a YAML config to boilerplate it for people to work with YAML? Um, again, we're not on the product team, so it's hard to answer right now, but uh, I will add that to the mail for the webinar. One moment. Uh, Jan comments, and, and really, we should just have Jan dial in. Let's see what he thinks of that when he writes his next, uh, next comment. So Jan says, for writing apps in YAML, feel free to do that already. His personal experience is that when you need to maintain them later, without the extends feature, it gets too complicated. He says, well, too complicated for me. It might be okay for you. Actually, I would say if Jan says it's too complicated in Magnolia, you should never, never try it. Um, Brian Lewis says, can you repeat that again? But Brian, it's difficult for me to know which exact piece you would like repeated. Perhaps it's best to follow along with the YouTube video later. So at this point, we've run over time for the webinar. Discussion is still going on. So I'm happy to stick around and keep doing that for people who are interested. We still have 40 some odd people on the line. Um, I'm going to invite Jan to, uh, to join the webinar. One moment here. I don't know if he has time. He wasn't scheduled to participate. So let's make him a panelist, and see if he wishes to join. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? We can. Do you have time to talk with us, Jan? Yes, yeah, sure. OK, great. So for people who don't know, Jan Hederka is the head of our, our development activities, uh, and he's one of the longest standing uh, Magnolia employees. Uh, if there are things that um, he doesn't know about Magnolia, well, they're probably not worth knowing. Thanks. I can. I hope I can stand up to the typed <laughs> intro. <laughs> Okay, so are there any other points you'd like to talk more about, Jan? Um, I believe there was one or two more questions which were not answered or where you said you will need more input, so maybe if you go through them, I'll try to answer. 
Maybe there are a few more. Like Will do. I'm running through the list of open questions, and I am cursing the GoToWebinar question panel. Mm -hmm. There was a question about working with NG applications. I think we probably should punt on that, uh, or not try and address it right now, unless you feel comfortable, Tomash. Okay, let's keep going through. Uh, there was a question about how would we link from a dialog YAML file to our custom app? We can't make eye contact with Jan right now, so Tomas, do you want to answer that one? Yeah. I mean, we'll see if... Okay, let's uh, it's better now. Okay, uh, in the, currently in the Magnolia, you may already, uh, thinking if I have somewhere, uh, you may already export something into YAML, uh, uh, just to, not in the tweaks. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so, Sorry, once more. Uh, yeah, here is download as a YAML. So the if you want to preview, just found it in in uh, an existing component in the demo or somewhere. I believe there is something. I'm not sure now, just uh, where exactly. Download as a YAML, and then may you may see the the exact uh, format how it should looks like. So that uh, should be easy, but otherwise it's exactly same how in the in the JCR. So you just uh, set uh, the question was to categorization or to content up. I think the question was if you create a dialog in YAML, whether you can use it in the app. And ah, the so thing yeah, if. if yeah, if you open one of the uh, action definitions in the app itself for opening the edit dialogs. That was now new. <laughs> yeah, that was new. Tomas, please, yes. If you go to apps, actions. No, 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 no. To no, apps, 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 sorry. Apps, yeah, yeah that sub apps, browser actions and I don't know edit property or add property at that one so here when you specify the dialogue name that dialogue can exist already in YAML that's just as it is so you don't need to do anything special for it Magnolia will pick it up if you want to define the dialogue in YAML for the details up when you are editing details of some of the content, that's currently not possible. It shouldn't be too difficult to tell the presenter to actually open it, but right now out of the box that's not possible. Okay, I'm continuing to go through the questions. All right, I'll start from the bottom because it's easier for me to keep reviewing. Um, I have a question asking if we can use a Spring REST backend. Use it for what? Yes, you can use Spring REST, for example, via Blossom, or you can have the chars added in Magnolia and from your code you can call it to uh, get the rest or create the endpoints, but yeah, the, the question is too generic. But there is no nothing limiting you from using it. But Magnolia also doesn't provide too much for making it easier for you to use. And that question is probably best answered by the developer who works on, uh, on our Spring integration. If you post to the forum, uh, the Magnolia forms, that might be the best way to get a, a, a response. You can share more details at that time as well. I'm going through. 
I think getting close to the end of the potential questions. So I think this leaves us with one interesting point for discussion. Um, uh, I think it's okay to, uh, to identify our, our asker here, Marvin Kerkhoff, who's a, a regular attendee of webinars and uh, a great user of Magnolia. Um, he had asked a question about uh, having a boilerplate to make it easy to use YAML config with the form module. And um, um, I had raised that issue. Jan had asked, how would that work? Um, and um, maybe, Marvin, you want to put in a few more details, or even I could happily unmute you, Marvin, and you can uh, uh, explain what you want if uh, we don't mind chatting for a few minutes. I'm going to presume this is OK, and if not, we will find out in one moment. OK. Ivan, are you willing to join us? Hello. All right. OK. Mm. Um, yeah, what I want to say is uh, it's easy to use YAML. Uh, we use it a lot in our newer projects. And um, we have a lot of things like, for example, the form module that is only available in the JCR structure. We can export the, the um, JCR configuration into YAML, but yeah, it would be easy to, to have uh, the same form module um, in, written in YAML instead of bootstrap thing, all the JCR stuff. Yeah, well, I don't still don't understand how should it help you. So you have right now the form module. It provides number of components with the dialogues. You can use those if you want. Yeah, the point is the point or is you, extending. You can write your own. Are you using? Yeah, but exactly. You don't have extends in uh, YAML. So how would you extend it? What you can do right now is write your own template definition and refer to the dialog, which is still in JCR. That doesn't have any problem. That works. In that definition, you can rewrite whatever properties you want or provide the different FTL file for rendering the form. What, what else is there? The point is, often if you use the form module components directly, and you want to change something in the um, configuration of uh, the form module. For example, you want to change some HTML. You need to override the configuration from the form module, and that is not the nice way, I guess. But how else would you do it? That, that's what I'm asking. Because even if we provide the, moment, the definition the in YAML, you would still need to redo the definition yourself. You can't just extend or change one property in the YAML definition because that YAML definition will exist in four module jar file. Yeah, the point is at the moment we use it. we use uh, a copy of the form uh, template definition in JCR, and that's it's a kind of a boilerplate. We don't use the form configuration. We don't extend the form configuration from the JCR. So we copy every time the configuration from the JCR form module to our own module. And uh, then we have also uh, the possibility to change everything without overriding uh, the configuration. And the same would be helpful if, if this is uh, possible in YAML. So what you are really asking is not anything specific to form module, but in general, you want to be able to extend something in YAML, right? Yes, like the include yeah, function in YAML. Mm, the include works the other way around. If you would include the whole template definition from the form in your module, then you would be using the one, the original one in your module. You would not be extending it. 
you would not be able to include the file that has just one property or each property separately, right? Or it would not save you anything at least. But That's yes, right. in general, the, the extent feature is missing from YAML. We know about it. It's not anything which is very easy to implement. And because of that, it's not coming very quickly, definitely not in next few weeks. We are evaluating some of the approaches. But, probably. but it's, not, it's not that, it's not that I want to extend everything. You misunderstand me. It's only that I want for, for pure people uh, for, for some people that have uh, no skills with Magnolia and everything and they, they start with YAML and they find it cool and uh, they want to use the form module. So at the moment there is no way out of the JCR um, how can I use the form module without the JCR configuration. So will you be offering modules in the future uh, based on YAML. So I'm going I'm, to... I'm still not, not getting what, what you're not able to use there. As Tomar pointed out, you can download the definition as a YAML if you want to edit it. You anyway need to do that. Uh, no, if I may get in just quickly, I probably get it. Uh, what uh, he's asking for is that currently you have all configuration for the form in the JCR, and what will be nice to have, like in the YAML, just set up, for example, configuration for uh, select field, for the field box, just really take piece of, of that form in the JCR, but rewrite it, like override it in the YAML. Something what I showed with the uh, overriding the bootstrap module, just the CSS which are in the bootstrap module. I see that point. So Jan, if you if you get it now. And Marvin, did we get it? Yes, uh, Tomas did it, get it. Yeah, that's the point. I don't see how that could be working without having the extents. You don't need the extending process. <laughs> Forget the extending okay, process. Okay, we may get to it later on together, and then we may maybe contact Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think probably the best thing to do is get an example, perhaps, Marvin, of exactly what this might look like, and then make sure that we're all sort of looking at the same thing and we know what we're trying to do. Um, and I see comments of... Someone is excited about this question, and they can be copied. OK, um, we'll figure out some way to do that. Before we wrap up, are there any other questions? I see we've dwindled down to 25 eager listeners. Um, are there any specific questions on the direct topic of the webinar? I'll let people think about that for a minute. And I'll ask you to think about a few other things as well. Um, first, Marvin, it's, I'm really glad you participated. And I'm really excited to hear that you're already using the YAML functionality a good amount. I'd love to hear more about that. I think most of us would. Um, I'd like to know what other webinar topics you want to hear about, um, especially on the light development topics. Uh, these webinars are pretty well attended. I think this was the most registrations we've ever had for a webinar. And um, let's see if we can keep that interest and attendance up. Um, and if you've got some interesting cases around YAML that you'd like to share, perhaps just drop us a note. Um, you can post on the forums to share them. You can write to me. I shared my email as the, as the answer to one of the questions. It's just zak.greaint at magnoliacms.com. Be easy to find and just let us know what's going on. Yeah, maybe I have a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, we can show a use case where we have a full integrated um, possibility to use Node.js gulp tasks inside a Magnolia installation without an extended or an external um, node installation. Mm -hmm. So you can use, you can use ZAS 
less what you want inside your Magnolia module without anything installing. Neat. I think we'd love to talk to uh, uh, about doing a webinar on that. Um, <laughs> um, off topic, stress and titles integration. I think we'll we'll take that to some other forum. Um, unless another question jumps in in the next minute, then we'll wrap things up. Marvin, I'll be in touch. Thanks. Jan, thanks for parachuting in and answering a bunch of questions. And of course, most of all, many thanks to Tamash, who has been rehearsing the same 30 minutes or so of live demo for the last day and a bit to make sure that it went off well for today's webinar. Um, I know that when I rehearsed my late development webinar, I could not type in all the property names by memory, so it was impressive to see. Thank you also to everyone else who attended. Um, and um, we hope to see you at the next webinar. Also, we'll send out a link to the recording and some additional information. Um, today is Thursday, so likely on Monday. Thank you all very much. And with the few remaining questions, I will follow up with those in a minute. Thanks all. Have a great morning or a great evening wherever you are. Yeah, thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.